Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Just checking all the streams. You know how it starts each night. Bear with me, folks. I've done this before. Okay, I'm live. Ladies and gentlemen, I can actually say that now because I can see that I'm live everywhere, which is great. Great news. Uh, great news for me. Great news for you because you get to watch this uh, special live stream uh, going live tonight to talk all things uh, collecting whiskey. Now, I've talked about whiskey collecting before. I've talked about it as a subject uh, on Instagram. I've talked about it in one of our YouTube videos. I've talked about this before. This is not new. However, uh, since I last talked about it, a lot of things have changed in whiskey collecting and I see the discussion online constantly changes. The way that people um, interact with whiskey collectors, what whiskey collecting is uh, and how to make the most of being a whiskey collector and how to collect whiskey and the mistakes that you can make along the way. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Everyone does. Everyone does. Everyone makes mistakes along the way. Okay. Let me preface this by saying that there are three types of uh, whiskey drinker, of, of whiskey uh, people, three types of main, three main types of whiskey people. Um, the first type is uh, whiskey drinkers. Now, massive respect. Those are the people that get a bottle, uh, open it when it arrives, or that night, or whatever, or that weekend. But their idea is that they open it when it arrives. They are buying with the sole intention of um, drinking that whiskey. Those I call whiskey collectors. The second category is whiskey collectors. Now, these are people who buy to collect a few bottles, drink a few bottles, but are collecting bottles to drink on special occasion uh, with special friends, milestone birthdays, special birthday bottlings, things like that. A good friend of mine who turned 30 a couple of years ago opened uh, six 30-year-old whiskeys at the tasting. And tasting that he had some friends around and he said, it's my 30th, I want to open six bottles of 30-year-old whiskey. That's very cool. So he collected those bottles over a number of years so that when he got to his 30th, he could open six bottles of 30-year-old whiskey and share them with those who enjoy them and appreciate them. So that's whiskey collecting. Um, the third category are whiskey flippers. Now, I don't want to be, I don't want to deride them too much, but whiskey flippers, uh, we don't like. I don't like. We at the society don't like. We take an active stance against flippers at the society, in fact. We don't want people buying for the sole purpose of reselling. It's against the club rules. It's against what we stand for. So therefore, we actively discourage it. We know it happens, but we don't want to encourage that kind of activity. Let's put it that way. So with, th with that said, um, thank you, everyone who's tuning in, by the way. Nick Husek, Darren Howie, Steve Oates, Dan Mathers, Ben Soshan, Caleb Chan, Mark Teague, Sam Licardi, good to see you all. And all, of course, everyone who's tuning in on the other side, James Hart, uh, John Blunt. Love this show, he says, exclamation points. Thank you so much, John. I love to hear it. Um, Josh Fisher, Mitch Garren. Mitch, Mitch, hope you're well, mate. Hope you're well. Um, okay, so I want to chat tonight a little bit about... Uh, <laughs> no, please go ham. No, no, no I'm not going to go ham. I'm just going to say, look, there's some... We actively discourage flippers. I'm, tonight I'm talking about collectors, the second category. Whiskey drinkers, collectors, and flippers. Whiskey drinkers, love you all. I'm one of those. Whiskey collectors, love you all. I'm one of those. Whiskey flippers, I don't care for you. Sorry. If you're buying with the sole express purpose of flipping that bottle a month later or a week later or whatever you're doing with it, um, uh, you, you're talking about whiskey flipping another time because tonight we're focusing on whiskey collectors. Now, I collect some whiskey, not a whole lot. I've got a few bottles. And um, depending on who you'd ask, it's a, a few too many or not enough. But I do have a whiskey collection um, and it's um, I buy whiskeys that I want to drink. Now, that's the first stage of whiskey collecting I want to touch on. I buy whiskeys that I'm intending to drink, that I have no intention of selling. Otherwise, that's flipping. I buy them with the sole express purpose of drinking them. Um, 
So with that said, uh, I have over the years bought a number of bottles, uh, both from this society and elsewhere, that I uh, deem collectible, that are special to me in some way, uh, that it may have been signed by a distiller or it may have been a really special experience where I picked that bottle up. And I don't want to just let that go. For the, for the I might make a few bucks on top of it. I don't think that's really right. And I don't think that's the right way to go around it. Um, Sally Loud, Rob Akers, Billy Viard, good to see you guys. Hope you're all well. Um, so yeah, this is what I want to talk about tonight was a bit about whiskey collecting. So as I said, I've bought bottles over the years from the society and from elsewhere that I've wanted to collect, that I wanted to stash away. I want to have on a shelf looking nice and I want to open them at the right occasion. And that might be some friends coming around. That might be a celebration. It might be an anniversary. It might be a milestone. It might be a birthday. It doesn't matter what it is. If you find the right occasion to open it, I will. And that's the, I, I bought them to drink them. I don't care if it's a dot one. I don't care if it's a 40 year old whiskey or whatever it is. The idea is that you open them and enjoy them. So, um, Dan Mathers says, here, here, buy to, to collect, to drink. That's a really good way of putting it, Dan. I buy to collect, then I, but I have the full intention of drinking it. I don't buy hoping that I can flip it. I think that's absurd. I think the idea is that I get to enjoy it. You know what? If you want to make money, uh, don't buy whiskey. The idea is you make money off investments, off other things. If you're looking to make money off whiskey, you, it's a long period of, of waiting often, and it's not a huge return. It's meant to be enjoyed. These are farmers and people making the spirit and for it to just be encased in some bottle that gets endlessly flipped. I've got some theories about that. I reckon this Yamazaki uh, Sherry Cask 2016 has never been opened. There you go. I don't think it's ever been opened. I think it's just a circular uh, worldwide market of bottles constantly moving between countries and cities being constantly sold and sometimes for less than they were before the last person bought it because it's, it's, it's constantly up and down. It's down at the moment. So that's the thing. It's, it's all about, uh, as, as uh, Nick Husek says, hashtag open your bottles. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Jim Shitsos, good to see you. Stu Mountjoy, good to see you. G'day, says Billy, good to see you, mate. Um, just buy more uh, than the speed you drink, and then you do both one and two. Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> Caleb, if I try, yeah, yeah, exactly. If you Exactly, no comment. But it's true, though. It's true. So that's why you can actually enjoy these. You can enjoy whiskey. You can drink it. You can collect it. Nothing wrong with collecting whiskey. Nothing wrong with drinking it. Just not a big fan of flipping it. That's all I'm going to say. So I wanted to show you some bottles from my collection, if you like, just a, just a couple of things here and there that I picked out in the last three minutes <laughs> of what I've, I want to show you uh, some of my journey in distilleries and whiskeys that I quite like. I'll show you one example. Here you go. Uh, this is probably going to fetch, would fetch a lot of money if I was to flip it. I have no intention of, I'm going to drink this. Here is a Port Charlotte PC5. I'll hold that up. This is the first Port Charlotte uh, official release that they did. Uh, it's a five-year-old whiskey from 2001. So this came out in 2006, which is about the year I bought it. Uh, I bought it 06, 07, somewhere around there. Uh, it was in a little bottle shop in Melbourne. It looked interesting. I picked one up. So, and I've since tasted it a few times. I think it's a marvelous whiskey. I have a soft spot for Port Charlotte. I have a soft spot for Brook Laddie. I don't have a soft spot for Octomore. I just don't care for it. I think it's just a bit of a gimmick. But I think some of their peated runs at Port Charlotte and their unpeated Isla Spirit is one of my favorite distilleries, which is why I hosted the uh, the probably the rarest Brooklady tasting Australia seen last year. Probably, I don't know of any others, but that was probably one of them. Uh, I I hosted that Brooklady tasting, and we hosted and we opened and enjoyed Golder, Redder, and Blacker still, along with one twenty seven point four four, twenty three point seven four. I'm going to get that code wrong, or twenty three point seven five. I think the code is, which was a twenty seven year old single cask from Brooklady Distillery, and we uh, also opened um, Laddie Classic and. Look, it was it was a marvelous night, marvelous night, truly fantastic evening of rare Brooklady expressions. Why did I open all those redder, gold, or blacker? I could have sold them for thousands each. I'd have wanted to open them and share them in company who would appreciate them. I'll post a photo back up in the um in the Facebook group. Bit of a flashback to that event. It was only September last year. Time flies. Um, flippers normally don't know jack about whiskey. Uh, Andrew, you're completely right. They don't. They often don't. They, they're just in it for the quick buck. They don't understand how to collect. That's why I want to talk a bit about that tonight, how to collect whiskey, how to go about it. This is one that I collected. I know that's a distillery I enjoy. And this is something I'm going to get back to. How to collect, pick whiskey you enjoy. I don't care if you only enjoy MacMira, Swedish whiskey. You don't see much of it in Australia, but you see bits of it here and there. It's mostly light and fluffy and inoffensive. 
It's good whiskey. It's not my cup of tea. But if you are a Mac Mirror fan and you want to buy every Mac Mirror that comes out and all their special editions, then do so. You can collect whatever you want. And the, the value of your collection, both as a drinker and as an appreciator, will only go up with your appreciation of it, not the markets. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stress that enough. Um, the Yama the 26 is just all gray and you want 50, no one will ever know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one will ever know what's in that bottle. This is going to get constantly thrown around. What about Kurosawa's? Know anyone that's opened one before? Caleb, I've opened a number of Kurosawa's. I've opened maybe 12 or 13 different bottles of Kurosawa in my lifetime. Lovely whiskeys. Some of them are uh, not lovely. They're, they're, they're not every whiskey is great at the distillery. In fact, it's probably one of the more inconsistent single malts on the market. But I've opened about 12 or 13 different Kurosawa's at home and at events and whatnot. Um, but that was a long time ago. I mean, I haven't opened one in more, more than three or four years now. I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> um, I'll do 11. Okay, the Laddie Tasting last year is, is in my all-time favorite tastings. Liam, it means the world to me that you say that. Seriously, member feedback of the events that we do and the experiences we create for our members and the amount of effort that goes into some of these events like that one where we're sourcing different things and wanting the lineup to be exactly what we want is uh, is something is a bit of an art form and a bit of a, a a bit of a blood sweat and tears that goes into it sometimes. So not always. I mean, sorry, not always. As in, like, uh, not sometimes all the cogs turn perfectly and everything works out. Sometimes it requires a bit of blood sweat and tears, which is what that event was. And I can say that's a bad thing. It was just what it is. But I really appreciate member feedback always. Um, <laughs> I love triggered ranty man. No, no, it's just I haven't had dinner and I'm hungry. <laughs> No, but I am a little bit ranty tonight, but whiskey flippers do get me ranty. Okay, but I wanted to show you. See, this is quite a valuable bottle now. I don't know what it goes for on the market. I quite simply don't care. Maybe a thousand bucks or something like that. Who cares? Um, but then that I'll never get to appreciate it if I get rid of it. Yes, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. I don't know what I don't know what is. But you say if I sold that on, I'll never get to fully appreciate that with friends and family who want to appreciate that with me. Uh, and the fact I've also got uh, the rest of them as well, PC6, 7, 8, all that kind of stuff, means that I could probably open them all at one time. I'm intending to. I did that last year. I'll do it this year. It, it, I'm, I buy to collect to drink, as Dan Mather said. But that was a special moment in my whiskey career, 2007. I wasn't working in the whiskey industry then, but I was certainly um, very much an appreciator and picking things up here and there and being interested by things. Another good example is, I'm not overly, uh, and as as many of my friends and you watching will know, I, I can always pick a lot of, there's a lot of problems in the Australian whiskey industry. This is something that Andrew's written about at length on Whiskey and Wisdom, and you can check that out. Um, it's something that I've ranted about before on video. I've written about it myself as well. Um, not to the same detail that Andrew's gone into. He goes quite investigatively journalistic in it, and I absolutely applaud that because what he wrote about it is quite true. There's a lot of flaws, a lot of errors, a lot of not learning from mistakes happening still. And that's why we're seeing a lot of problematic Australian whiskey. I'm going to leave it at that. We're not talking about Australian whiskey tonight. But what I will show you is that I, um, this is a bit of a collector's item in Australian whiskey world. Starwood Distillery at one point released what's called the New World Projects releases. Uh, they were 700 mil car strength bottles of interesting projects that they were working on behind the scenes. The real story that goes behind it is that they weren't capturing the whiskey audience of Australia yet. They needed something like this to capture on top of their Starwood sales, which is fine. And they did some really interesting things. For those who are in the same room at this time in Sydney, when this was launched, this is the very first New World Projects release. Single cast release number one. I don't know if that's coming up on camera. Bottle eight of 105 bottles ever. So that's the first ever New World Project. That's a cool little piece of Australian whiskey history as well as some Scottish history I've shown you here. I'm intending to open that. I'm not going to sell it. There you go. Whiskey collecting. And of course, those of you who know I am have a soft spot. We're cracking it open now. Ah, I could crack something open now. I mean, I've got bottles in front of me. I don't have a dram in my glass yet. I'm going to pour a dram first. Maybe I'll start with this. Uh, I'm going with I Dream of Creamy, which we're featuring this Friday for the um, Weird Wacky and Wonderful Tasting. There's four packs left on the website out of the 88 that we produced. So uh, if you selected express post, you might get it by Friday because uh, it will go to the warehouse tomorrow morning. Don't quote me on that. You can always watch it later though. And there's only four left. Um, uh, Greg Ingham says he started his journey with Space Hard and 20 years, I love Isla whiskey. Exactly. Nice bit of Starwood history. Rob, that's exactly right. It's not, it's, uh, it's the first ever single cast, the 100 liter double wood single cast that was picked out 
by a mixture of, um, I think it was the uh, Brook and Jules, Ben Baranow. There's a couple of other people who are involved in the selection of this whiskey. I'm sorry if I forgot, I'm missing your name on this. But it's very cool to find, you know, piece of a little local history like that as well. Uh, what are your thoughts on bottle swapping? Stuart, no problem with it. Because you swap with someone else, that's just good sharing. I mean, we don't do swaps at the society. It's not what we're about. But if you have a swap with someone, you know what? That's fine. You're not doing it to profit off, you know, a flipping, as I said. Anyway, I'm, I'm a whiskey appreciator. I'm, I appreciate whiskey. I drink whiskey. I collect whiskey. And drink, drinking and appreciation are very different in my mind, but that's okay. Um, those of you who also know I have a soft spot for Glen Murray Distillery. Distillery 35. Everyone knows their 35s. I love my 35s. So much so, I've got a bunch of Society 35s tucked away. Only, oh, not the bunch, actually. Maybe two or three. <laughs> I've drunk a few of them. So there's, um, but I also have a things like in, interesting, like little 1995 Glen Murray here. That's a cool one. It's got a nice, uh, very, very dark single sherry cask color on that one. Things like this that are collector's items, I guess. They're interesting. They're, they're expressions from a particular distiller or time and place that, are, that I find interesting. Now, I also collect some society casks, as I said. Stuff like this. Here you go. Not even, not even old stuff. 30.94. Why did, I, why did I collect a bottle of this? Because the name, it is, name on it is Riding a Duck Bareback Up Mount Etna. You can't get much more uh, accidentally offensive in a title than that. That's fantastic. Everyone knows riding a duck. This is this was the riding the duck model. I still have one. I actually forgot I had that. Um, and that's that's exciting. So that's going to be something I'll open up at some point. A cast that I was personally quite involved with, uh, along with uh, Margaret Bench. Big shout out to Margaret. Uh, Broadside Cannon Barrage 27.112, a 21-year-old uh, single cask from a distillery in Campbelltown. So it was a first fill sherry butt after 21 years, like naval cannons on the nose. Absolutely spellbinding stuff. Uh, and then um, another bottle I collected, 33.119, a gum tree bonfire barbecue on the beach in celebration of the 10th anniversary of the SMWS in Australia. A bit of a milestone bottle. But you know how I said I'm a collector? I'm also a drinker. That bottle's half empty or half full, depending on your uh, disposition in life. So there you have it. I opened that because I wanted to share it around. And it was a particular night with some guests who I knew would appreciate it who are Big fans of our big distillery. So I was like, well, have you tried this? And I was like, nope, so let's open it. And it's been open now for maybe a year. It's not. It's ho holding up very nicely. I don't argon gas my bottles. I don't uh, parafilm my bottles. So oh, there's a couple of parafilmed. But like, it's, it's things like that that uh, it's best opened and enjoyed and made something of. Uh, Liam says, it's funny. I think the way collectors will talk about their bottles has a nostalgia to it, like a good story or a moment or event. But they'll talk the same way about it a crazy expensive rare bottle as well, as they will about a half drunk bottle of J Jack Daniels. Oh, sorry, uh, Johnny Walker black that the dad gave them. Yeah. It, it is funny. I mean, it's, it's more about um, time and place and where you enjoy it and who you enjoy it and why you enjoy it. And, and the, and the moment in tasting it, uh, I tasted these whiskeys before I've tasted them all and gone, I really want to get a bottle of that. And then I've put it on the shelf and I've gone, I want to relive that experience at some point. And these are memories that you carry through your taste buds, through your experience, through your olfactories, just understanding and tasting things and, and living through these things, which is what makes it so exciting to be able to taste things like Australian history, Scottish history, society history. I love this kind of stuff. That's why I love tasting things like the dot ones when, when, when we get them. Speaking of which, we are working on a few formats for events coming up once restrictions are all worked out. And it's um, there is one that I just sort of leaked just then accidentally. But there's um not accidentally. It's there's a dot ones coming up. That might be part of the gathering. So the gathering is coming back. We did it last year, which included the Bricks Night, the Brickladdy Night, the gatherings around the country. The gathering is coming back. To what format that looks like, we don't know yet because it's still too early days, etc. But the you know we'll know that closer to the closer to the bone once we do. Um, evening from David and or Cal Caroline Taylor. Good to see you. Um, Robbie Gilligan, mate. Mate, good to see you. Hope you're well. Lee Wallace. Um, Robbie, it's been too long. I always say that, though. We're all very busy, and um, we live in different states, so that's going to happen. But in the meantime, that's my, my, I'm going to give you my final rundown on the tips of collecting whiskey. One, collect what you like to drink. 
if you're not if you're not a fan of Lafroig, for instance, I don't know how you couldn't be, but if you weren't, if you weren't a Lef- fan of Lafroig, don't go and buy a whole bunch of rare Lafroigs. It doesn't make any sense. You won't enjoy them, and if you that means you're really just buying them to flip them, which I don't agree with. However, if you are if you're a huge fan like I am of Brooklady Distillery, then you might want to go and find some laddies that you're interested in. There might be modern ones. There's lots of special releases they're putting out these days. Uh, one could say too many, but that's okay. They're doing a lot of interesting things. We sometimes see single casts of them through the society. Very rarely. That does happen though. Uh, so uh, that's my first tip. Buy what, to collect what you would are interested in. Like I said at the beginning, if your main interest in life is Mac Mira from Sweden, 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 then aim to collect those, enjoy those, share those and be a part of that. If your if your main interest is flavor and ex- exploration of flavor and what the society does through all of our flavor profiles, then collect society single casks. I've got no problem with collecting them. Like I said, even I have a collection of them myself. Uh, however, and the second thing is I was going to say is, yeah, obviously don't don't buy what you're not interested in, which is the sort of addendum of the first point. But the sec- the last one I was going to say is, um, store them well, store them upright in a cool dark area. Uh, preferably without too much dampness, preferably without too much direct sunlight. Um, just store them upright. Uh, there are some schools of thought that it doesn't really matter upright or, da- or laying down. I don't believe that. I think it has to be, they have to be um, uh, stored upright. And if you are opening a bottle that has been stored correctly, even correctly for a long time, hold it upside down for at least 30 seconds, move it around a bit, move it inside out so that it might be able to wet the cork again before you try and... Open it up again. Um, blasphemy. Not a fan of the... Yeah, I know, exactly. Pure blasphemy. I think it's because I saw you joined, Dan. Um, Greg Larry says, I sometimes trade up out cheaper ones to reach the bigger budget offerings. Am I still an evil flipper? No, Greg. No, trading is fine. I've got no problem trading. I'm saying flippers are those who buy for the express purchase, for, for the express intention of selling. Even like a day later or a week later. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that personally. We don't agree with it at society, but you do you. Martin says, I like the bloke in Unfiltered a few months ago. He buys to drink, but he's about 15 years behind. So what he opens today is what he bought 15 years ago. I'm kind of the same, but with a much shorter tail. Martin, I'm the same as well. Uh, I, I've, got a, I've got a much, much shorter tail as well. I buy to drink and I often, I'm often opening bottlings that I may have bought even like just two or three years ago, but I'm opening them now. Um, so it's the same thing though. Uh, although, you know, stuff arrives in the office or whatever that I just want to open. So like I say, I'm a, I'm a whiskey drinker and a whiskey uh, collector uh, and, of course, appreciator. But um, that's right. Um, but does 30 years count? What, 30-year-old whiskey or Vienna or buying uh, opening stuff that you bought 30 years ago? I'm not sure. I didn't know you were that old. I don't think you are. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. Bob went in. Good to see you, mate. Um, I really, I really love doing these lives every night. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it for tonight. It's been really good. But that was my takes on whiskey collecting. It's very, um, it's very straightforward. If you like, is that the right word for it? Not straightforward. Look, it's, it's you know, my my three main tips are buy what you like to drink. So the second tip I meant to get onto was diversify and discover. You never know what you're missing out on unless you really actually go down the rabbit hole a bit with some, not just distilleries, but with flavor. Focus on flavor. Go down that rabbit hole. See what you can find in your category. If you find out that after all of this collecting, you actually just enjoy drinking chartreuse, then you just enjoy drinking chartreuse. That's an Emma comment, by the way. Um, selling when I'm 70. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, hey, if it's your retirement plan, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think I'm less than two years into your whiskey journey. Caleb, it's, you're at the best point. You know what? If you're only one or two or three years into your whiskey journey right now, I reckon you're at the best point. And people will disagree with me on this, but I reckon we are honestly coming into what I call the golden era of whiskey production and releases. And I don't just mean Scotch whiskey. I mean, world whiskey. I mean, everything. I mean, the innovation in flavor and discovery and development of what can be done with oak and uh, other wood types, of course, and other things like that uh, is, I think, I think we're coming into a golden era. Uh, but that's a discussion for another time. The time, the, the, the balance of times uh, of cross whiskey where I'll, I'll be saying basically that if, you know, if you think that the seventies was the best time to live in whiskey or something, and then you're probably wrong. Um, 
Hi, cheating late, leaving early, but good to see you anyway. Good to see you, Bob. Hope you're well, mate. Um, look, I'm going to leave it there for tonight. I just want to talk about whiskey collecting. Buy what we like to drink, diversify and discover, and store them upright. Hope you all have a wonderful night. Whiskey Roundtable with Alex Dahlenberg, Scott Fitzsimons, Andy Milne, and a special guest and myself uh, are joining back in tomorrow night. That's a late start, though. It's like 8 or 8.30. It'll be advertised, though. You'll see it. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night, and uh, cheerio.